just to, to play devil's advocate, anything in your periphery, your outlook, what could what could change your opinion if there was some policy change or or historic event? Um, is, is there anything on the radar, Stacey, Max, that would change your your outlook? The American people decided to <laughs> nominate for president two options, a, a clown or a man with cognitive decline. You know, it's it, it's like they kind of made their decision. Like we have a guy who's 80 years old in office who started exactly, he was elected the month that, uh, a, a month or two after the U.S. went off the gold standard. And I think we've kind of given up. I don't think there's anything, I don't think there's anything a Joe Biden administration can do to rescue the dollar. And the dollar is all that matters, right? It, it, that's all that matters in the current paradigm. China's doing their own thing. They're stockpiling gold. They're probably stockpiling Bitcoin. I know they seized 200,000 from a, a Ponzi scheme operator, 200,000 Bitcoin. Who knows what they're going to do with that? But right. but they, they're stockpiling resources we have no idea like all those imports over the past decade how much they're actually stockpiling sure. in preparation for this thucydides trap situation and the dollar collapse i think they've been preparing for it if you look at their actions that's what i'm assuming so w like this system because the world is under a u.s empire it's up to the U.S. Only the U.S. could fix the situation because they're the ones in charge. But like Warren Buffett had said with the derivatives, like where do they even begin? <laughs> There's so much fraud and derivatives and, and, and debt and, and nobody knows who owns what. And, we, you know, so this country, we can't even distribute a vac. Do you think that that sort of country can fix the system that they created? I mean, no, how, I, I, how, how difficult would it have been to just simply refabricate the treasury to print masks instead of dollars? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, with you. I'm totally with you on that. I know, Stacey, in answer to that question, I absolutely do not see any sort of competent leadership that's going to create a plan that, you know, would change the course of history as it's unfolding. I guess my question was more based in what's, you know, what, what, unforeseen events could occur in right okay so it, it, it's like a question of probability and risk right sure. so money management is both you've got um looking at upside and alpha you know but you, it's a risk adjusted right you've got to adjust for risk so in the case of the fiat money avalanche think of it like um niagara falls right there's a there's a there's a niagara falls of cash that's coming into the system and you're in a barrel and you're heading for the edge of the falls and you get to the point where we are now in America, where the barrel has now gone over the edge and it's now falling down the Niagara Falls and it's going to head for the rocks. So the question is, what could stop the barrel from falling and hitting the rocks below? And the answer isn't um, absolutely zero because, for example, a flash uh, freeze right. could happen sure. and freeze Niagara Falls yeah. and stop the barrel. A helicopter could come and you could extricate yourself from that barrel and you could avoid death. Okay. Sure. What is the probability of that? I would high. say it's not absolute zero, but it's close. Yeah. So I say, okay, what's the probability that the Niagara Falls of cash, which is destroying the American economy and the global economy, um, and we've got Bitcoin, which is now on a parabolic move, people escaping the, f the blazing fire that is the fiat money. What is the probability of that changing and going in reverse? And the, I would say if it's not absolute zero, because you never know, aliens could show up like Paul Krugman believes in aliens coming into America. The Galactic Federation. The Galactic Federation <laughs> could show up. You, uh, Area 51 could it could send over some some aliens and things. You know, you can't say it's absolutely zero. Right. But I think it's as close to zero as you ever find in the money management business. You know, with Bitcoin, I say there is no top because there, when it comes to the dollar, there is no bottom. And also, you're going on 300 years of history. No, no fiat money has ever survived, right? They've mm -hmm. all gone to zero or lost 99.9% .9 of their purchasing power. So, you know, that seems like I've never seen a, a, a more lopsided, one-sided bet 
in the 40 years that I've been involved with Wall Street investing, investing technology, startups as a CEO, and I've done everything from in this business you could possibly imagine. I've never seen a more lopsided upside bias than I have with Bitcoin. I might also add, let me point out here that the last opportunity for the state, for the US empire to stop this situation was with Barack Obama. October 31st, 2008, the Bitcoin white paper was published. Mm. A week later, Obama was elected on hope and change. The financial system around us was collapsing. It was on the verge of absolute collapse. The population of America said, yes, we're electing Obama, an amazing orator. He said he gave them so much hope that he would put an end to this crime wave, that he would stop this situation, that these bankers would be punished for obliterating the U.S. economy. Well, then uh, January 3rd, 2009, Bitcoin was birthed into the world. Obama took office two weeks later and he promptly ignored the people. The people were right. He should have done something. He should have arrested all those bankers. He should have like um, t- uh, kicked all the CEOs out. They all like were failed banks. The, the taxpayer of America bailed them out. They all should have lost their job. None of them did. That was the opportunity to do something. Mm. He chose instead to maintain the status quo, let uh, Larry Summers people rip across America with more of this um, excuses for fraud. So they compounded the fraud and that fraud is now like, talk about parabolic. Look at the amount of fraud that has been piled upon this global financial system since 2008. Uh, look at the balance sheets of the central banks around the world. Bitcoin is like a little tiny blip, the price, the, the, you know, the asset class as itself compared to the enormity of this fraud. But Barack Obama had that opportunity at that moment and he failed it. He, he chickened out. He decided to go with the people who um, destroyed the system. Yeah, I'd say that was the last chance. So, so help me wrap my mind around something uh, when it comes to just investing more in Bitcoin now, because every instinct I have as an investor, when you see a chart that looks like this, you want to run away from it, right? Uh, that's historically. And when I see the sentiment surrounding Bitcoin on Twitter or in various chat groups or conferences and whatnot, it's very reminiscent of the sentiment around gold and silver in 2011 when um, you know, the bulls have been proven right year after year and you couldn't tell them any different that silver wouldn't go to a hundred dollars. And it was a lot of frustrating conversations and binary predictions. Um, I look at the Bitcoin price today and I think anybody who entered the space, even just a year ago is up 400%. The speculator in me says people are going to start taking profits. And I understand the bigger picture moving towards a unit of accounts, but you know, we still operate on a U.S. dollar reserve currency. So do you do you expect that to impact the trajectory in 2021 here? Just looking at the profits that are on the table that are very tempting for individuals. Right. Well, we started buying it at a dollar. Yeah. So uh, that question has been around for 10 years, right? Uh, when it was at a dollar and then trading at $50, uh, you're like, wow, it's, you know, it's a 50x return. That chart looks pretty uh, parabolic. Uh, same thing at five hundred dollars and a thousand and ten thousand, and now we're up around you know pushing high thirty thousands, forty thousands. But I think what people need to understand about Bitcoin is that it is the birth of an entirely new asset class, and it's on its own vector, and it doesn't correlate with anything, and it's disrupting the entire global money system and disrupting gold. And gold, as we know, is in the what ten to trillion dollar market cap level. And Bitcoin should trade uh, at an even market capitalization to gold. So we're talking 400,000 plus per coin. There's just not a lot of supply. Uh, The Bitcoins on the supply side is very meager. And the protocol is ingeniously designed so that every four years, the output or the supply is cut in half. You know, you have the halvings every four years. We just went, we just experienced one recently in the last six months or so. And um, that, of course, gets people's attention because that supply is shrinking. Unlike the gold market, where the supply is, you know, call it two and a half, three percent a year. And if the gold price were to get to $5,000 an ounce, you know that the supply would go a lot higher because suddenly 
technology would improve, people would uh, do more exploration, they would find more deposits. And just like we saw in the oil industry, remember the idea of peak oil? And oil was at $147 a barrel. Oh my gosh, well, then here's fracking. You know, they the technology closed the gap and suddenly there was a supply glut of oil and uh, the price got very, very weak. And the same thing can happen in the gold market. Uh, whereas uh, that's impossible with Bitcoin. It's algorithmically deterministic at 21 million coins. That's it. The supply on a daily basis, and we're currently at 900 coins a day, is constantly shrinking every four years as per the halving. And and that gets, so the, the supply side of the equation is getting smaller and smaller, and the demand side is getting stronger and stronger. You know, I mean, if you were to plant an acorn into the ground and uh, you come back the year later and it's... Uh, you know, a foot high or 18 inches high, you'd be like, wow, you know, this is an amazing return on my acorn. They come back 10, 15 years later, and it's, uh, you know, 50, 50 feet high, 60 feet high, right? I mean, this is the seed of a new asset class mm -hmm. that is on a vector that is unlike anything else we've ever seen, separating state from money, never happened before, chaos in America and all over the world, money printing, Parabolic. I mean, look at the money printing that's going on. 30% of all money in America printing, I think, in the last uh, four years or something like that. And just an amazing amount of paper out there. And uh, the ability to transact online is instantaneous. Anybody with a telephone can buy Bitcoin. Money managers have no problem getting huge amounts of cheap money. They can buy Bitcoin. So that's why, you know, you got to think of it like... Um, uh, you know, we we've seen. I think Apple com Apple stock adjusted for splits is if you were to uh, go back and and reverse all the splits, it's trading for around thirty thousand per share. Okay. And uh, so Bitcoin at thirty thousand a coin, right? I mean, when you combine gold with a messaging app, you have. <laughs> This phenomenon, and it's not go it's not going in. It's not going to get shrink. It's only going to expand exponentially. It's exponentially expanding. This is the Max Kaiser playbook. I've been sharing this with everybody around the world for 10 years now. And a lot of people in the world who got into Bitcoin at a dollar, $10, $50, $100, except for Peter Schiff, who I told to buy it at a dollar or $10 and he refused. Oh no, he says, you didn't tell him at a dollar, you told him at $10. Right, <laughs> but thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people around the world did. They're sitting on millions and millions of dollars at the unrealized profits and here's the thing stacy i saw you were tweeting about you know when are you going to sell it and you're like well you know i'm not going to sell it because i predicted going up to five hundred thousand or more and i'm just going to use it as collateral yes at, as 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 uh you know borrow against it and i can use it that way i don't why would i ever sell it i won't sell any bitcoin from here on out there's lots of um tech you know new platforms and services being offered for people in the Bitcoin space. So you can always just keep stacking and then borrow against your Bitcoin. And I do want to say, you know, <laughs> you can't say that Max didn't tell you so that these people are coming, these corporations are coming, these institutions are coming. It was it was really triggered by Paul Tudor Jones entering the space back in the second quarter of 2020. And now we see Elon Musk and Tesla with $1.5 billion. We don't know how much um, SpaceX has bought, but presumably they also bought some for their treasury, but they don't have to you know, file that with the SEC. U.S. corporates hold record $2.5 trillion in cash to meet pandemic shock. So that's $2.5 trillion. So if they all do like Elon, how much is that? $250 billion dollars? worth of uh, purchases coming. So even if half of them do it, that's 125. If 25% of them do it, it's like 75 billion. So there's a lot more money on corporate balance sheets where, you know, that Tesla money came from. Right, look at the big picture here. There's $300 trillion 
worth of investable assets on planet Earth. That includes stocks, bonds, property, precious metals. How much of that is invested in Bitcoin right now? Less than 1%. So we're looking to do the Elon here, go 10%. Uh, that's $30 trillion right there. Uh, Bitcoin is still less than a trillion dollars. So I figured that's how I come up with 40X from here. Uh, that's just a 10% allocation of Bitcoin. And of course, the thing is that we're going to see fiat money basically go the way of all fiat money, which is to 99.9% .9 loss of purchasing power. So that 10% effectively becomes 50, 60, 70%. Again, there is no top to the price of Bitcoin uh, because fiat money is a bottomless pit that loses for the past 300 years, 99.9% .9 of its purchasing power. And in a year's time, next year, when we're doing this, we're going to look back. We're going to all watch this episode back together and laugh that uh, Elon was able to buy that for 40000 not 400000 Well, crazy pays. And what I mean is that the benefit of being crazy or having the perception of being crazy is that you can get good deals on Bitcoins still. You know, I've often thought, I've often, you know, said that people say Max is crazy. But um, the point is that I want to make sure that I don't attract the beige people, oh. the middle of the road people, no. the average investor people, you know, uh, I want to stay away from those people because they'll be buying it at four or five, six hundred thousand a coin. The crazy people who make their own path, they're happy to buy it at a dollar or ten dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. That's the path of the crazy people. Uh, who is the same as Elon Musk. Elon Musk is perceived by many to be crazy. He goes on Joe Rogan, he's smoking a joint. Yes. This guy can't be trustworthy. Why would I do what this guy is doing? But that's very calculated uh, to fend off uh, competition. And he clearly worked this time. I mean, he was able to score a huge amount of Bitcoin still at these ridiculously cheap prices. Who's gonna come next, right, after Elon Musk? We pointed out uh, $2.5 trillion. I, I don't think, you know, I saw a lot of people talking to Tim Cook saying, oh, Tim Cook, you know, you have what? They have like $250 billion or something on their balance sheet. Sure, they have a lot of debt, you know, so th they accumulated a huge amount of debt in order to pay the dividend without having to pay taxes and, uh, with, you know, sending out that cash. So, you well, know. Well, you know, the source who told me the news before the MicroStrategy conference, remember I tweeted that yeah. the source told me big corporate buyer coming. Yeah. Turned out to be, the, I couldn't give the name at that time because it was, I didn't want to get my source in trouble. So there it was Tesla and the news has come out. The same source is telling me now, uh, unusually, uh, a name of a company that, that is in the running, according to this source, of being the next huge corporation to get into Bitcoin. And uh, that would be Oracle with uh, Larry Ellison. Nevertheless, Stan Druckenmiller, who has not had one down year with his hedge fund since 1981. That's a pretty good performance, okay? He's uh, outperforming most other hedge funds, I would say. And he just said to Goldman Sachs that he is very, very, not just one very, very, very short the US dollar, which is a pretty brave call, right? A brave move to do. Yeah, and he's uh, shorting uh, US Treasury bonds, which has uh, been a as they say, widowmaker trade now for 20 years, certainly since 2008. Remember, 2008 crisis hit, and that was met with a flood of money printing. And a lot of people, pundits, financial pundits, were saying, hey, you know, this is going to cause inflation. But it never really did cause inflation because all that free money was then bought back by the central bank. So they, they neutralized uh, the impact of the money printing by doing what's called debt monetization. So this has been going on now since uh, really 2008 in a huge way, and certainly in the larger context, certainly going back, as you point out, to the 1980s, Alan Greenspan. But now at this juncture, I believe we're at the stage where debt monetization is not going to work anymore. So the impacts of that money printing start to seep into and leak into the economy for real. And that's why you see commodities entering now a secular bull market. So they have been in a secular bear market for a while. Now they're starting to uptick. So oil is on a tear. Oil has had the best start in 2021 in something like 18 or 19 years or maybe longer. 30, 30, 30 years. years.
30 years. Oil's had the best start in 2021 in 30 years. You've got a big uh, merger possibly coming on, Exxon and Chevron. There's a lot going on in the oil patch. Uh, of course, uh, Bitcoin is a monetary commodity, you could say in that sense. It would trade as a commodity would trade because it's counter to the dollar. The so, IRS calls it a commodity. Yeah, so the dollar, meanwhile, is uh, looking like it's on the other side of that trade. And of course, Warren Buffett's been moving heavily into Japan. That's a bearish bet on the dollar. Mm -hmm. Stan Druckenmiller's moving into commodities and he's shorting treasury bonds. That's anti dollar. And uh, Bitcoin, of course, has already been telegraphing now for 10 years that the dollar is losing purchasing power. As a matter of fact, all fiat currencies, including the US dollar, have been in a hyperinflationary, hyperinflationary collapse against Bitcoin now for 10 years. And that is uh, set to expand and extend and continue. The, the point is that like in the lead up to him, he was acting crazy. Like, so he would probably be really bad at poker, right? He has all sorts of tells. Like he's he's like he was acting crazy, all this Dogecoin shit. Like he took down that Bitcoin from his uh, bio because he did kind of tweet that like he was concerned, like he didn't want to get in trouble for uh, you know causing the price to go up. Um, so you know, what do you think about all that Dogecoin stuff? Because a lot of people are angry at him for doing that. Well, I've said uh, for years now that you don't change Bitcoin, Bitcoin changes you. And obviously Elon Musk is under the influence of Bitcoin. He has been under the influence of Bitcoin now for at least two years. Uh -huh. And he's been smoking the Bitcoin. He's been mixing it in the bowl with his other treats. And he's huffing and puffing. And he went down the rabbit hole of Bitcoin. And that re changes the architecture of your mind. It changes the way you see things. It changes your physiognomy. It changes your psychology. It changes um, your mm. outlook. Mm. And, and so once somebody's under the influence of Bitcoin, we, c we no longer can ascribe rationality to them. In other words, uh, it's like flying over the Bermuda Triangle. The dials start spinning, spinning in opposite directions. Is the plane upside down? Is it right side up? Uh, it, it's just a zone of uh, un, unbearable unbearingness. It's not, there's no bearings. You're without bearings in an unbearable way with a bearer <laughs> asset. So you have a bearer asset, Bitcoin, and you're going into the unbearable unbearingness of the Bermuda Triangle of Bitcoin, flying over the financial zone, over the target. And down below is Michael Saylor with a big fucking flag waving it saying, open the Bombay doors, you freaking jerk. Drop all your cash on here, the Bitcoin target.